What do we have at the foundation of the reading? The moon, Pisces energy at the foundation of the reading. So we couldn't have asked for a better card to come out considering today is the full moon. And to all the Scorpios out there who may be listening to this collective reading, happy birthday. I am also celebrating my birthday today by being here with all of you doing this reading. During this full moon, you're all being called to focus on things that you are releasing, whether they're mindsets, behavioral patterns, or individuals in your environment who hold these lack mindsets. There seems to be some sort of new beginning here for you, but there can be a bit of anxiousness surrounding this because you can't see all the details. But there's a reason for this. And the reason is the divine, the universe, is calling for you to strengthen your faith. There's a beauty in trusting that what's meant for you will find you, even if the path looks different than you expected. There's also a message here about your sensitivity really being amplified during this full moon. So it's crucial that you guys are protecting your energy. Evaluate where you're investing your time and consider who's going to remain in your inner circle and who needs to leave. And, you know, when it comes to boundaries, this is one of the biggest forms of self-love, maybe even the biggest. It can literally be the difference between getting on your path and not getting on your path. Because going full circle to what I said at the beginning of the reading about releasing lack mindsets and anybody who holds them, this suggests that that sort of influence is hindering you from getting on your path. So now we can see that it's boundaries that can be the greatest weapon you have at this very moment. I feel that there's a lot of people that are trying to make their way back to you, depending on what your circumstances may have been with them. But so much has happened, and some of these individuals did way too much that it's absolutely impossible for them to find an opening in. Just facing you, just looking you in the eyes, or even just hearing your voice, I feel is something that these individuals fear. Because as time has gone on, they're finally starting to realize that they may have actually picked the wrong team and somehow wound up on this opposing forces side coming against you. Another one of the downloads that I received was that some of these individuals' lives are being dismantled one small piece at a time. And I feel that some of you are starting to realize that as you are bearing witness to this, you're getting a small piece of the puzzle of what may have gone down. And what I mean by this is during the point of impact, let's just say, you were very confused by who it was that was coming against you, what was happening behind the scenes, and it may have been incredibly difficult to put together a lot of the puzzle pieces. But something that I've always spoken about in my readings is that if you just focus on pushing forward and allowing the divine to sort out this mess for you behind the scenes, as time goes on, you'll start to gain clarity. And I feel that this is the season that a lot of you are in now. It's very much a tipping of the scales kind of energy. What do we have at the sacred place? Eight of Wands, right across that moon in the reverse and the sacral. So now we're starting to see an energy here where I feel a lot of you are having something illuminated to you in regards to what it was that was holding you back, what it was that was actually causing the delays. This is very much one of these situations where you're called to do some sort of releasing work or cord cutting, or the universe is really encouraging you to break away from certain groups of people. Maybe it's family members, maybe it's people you're dating. And almost overnight, your life starts flourishing. It's like when you're around certain people that are always broke, you find that you have to work harder. And then as soon as you release these people, all of a sudden the floodgates open. You're being inundated with opportunities, ideas. The energy is beginning to move. And in most cases, when you start to understand how this works, you can actually reduce this to select people. You know, sometimes we can be confused. Okay, where's the blockage? Who is it? And in these cases, it's very useful to find yourself in a kind of hermit mode, going into solitude to seek some sort of deeper understanding. And usually when people do this, you can really pinpoint these energies, right? So you go into hermit mode, you essentially disconnect from the everyday grind of life. And then when you're ready to emerge again, you start to quite possibly add people back into your life one by one until you recognize the blockage again. And this is tried and true. I have done this 
and it definitely works. But be prepared because a lot of the times the energy that was creating such a severe blockage is one that was quite possibly right underneath your nose, whether it's a person, family member, a friend, or even a behavioral pattern that you were quite possibly making up excuses for. This is the kind of energy that all of you are being asked to step into right now and get really honest with yourself as well. Don't make up excuses for these energies because it's either you or that energy. And you really want to take advantage of the astrology at this point in time because it's really going to help push through this energy and get things moving much quicker. But there's a thief of joy kind of energy that I'm picking up here with this eight of wands in reverse at the sacral. Both of these cards represent a need to release fear and isolation. And I do feel that if you actually set your intention around this, divine, universe, God, I'm ready to accept the truth, the truth will come to you. I mean, this is very clear here. What's been causing delays and stagnation in your life is wanting to be illuminated to you if you are ready to recognize and accept the truth. What do we have with the solar plexus, please? Too many cards. Hangman. So an energy of perspective. This is really highlighting what I'm saying here because you're starting to see things from a different perspective, right? Who you are hanging upside down, looking at this angry mob. This angry mob could represent the opposing force, whoever that is, or whatever that is. It could even be a behavioral pattern that you're making up excuses for. It just really depends on your situation here. But see how this individual's hanging there and they're kind of looking at whatever this is from a different perspective? It's like, ah, I didn't see it like that before. That thing has been standing in the way and stagnating me all this time. It's like something that you've been trying to recognize or come to terms with for a really long time, all of a sudden, in an instant, is just presented to you with detail once you actually ask the universe. See, this is something that we always forget, actually setting an intention around something and then asking for it. You know, a lot of people are sitting out here asking the universe, asking God, asking the divine, ah, when is this going to show up? I, I don't know how much longer I can wait. And the universe is kind of standing on the sidelines, tapping their foot and their arms crossed like you actually have to ask for it because you have free will. And then we have Seven of Swords, Aquarius Energy on the bottom of the deck here. So the Seven of Swords, this is a very sneaky kind of energy. But see how they're looking over their shoulder and these swords just represent your energy or whatever it is they were taking from you. And it's like they're looking back, checking to see if, uh, when if anybody's going to notice me sneaking off with these, I'm just going to tiptoe away. But this is what's been illuminated to you now. You're actually seeing this. Ah, perfect. Page of Pentacles. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn energy at the solar plexus. So now we're actually beginning to see movement here because this page of pentacles is the result of you actually releasing all of those energies that hold that lack mentality, that poverty mindset, that create those blockages in your life. The page of pentacles is the first step of the manifestation process. This is you saying, okay, divine, I've got my manifestation here. I'm I'm ready to put in all the work that you deem necessary in order to bring this into my everyday waking life. Now, the difference in how you once did this to how you were doing it now is the fact that you don't have any sort of hangers-ons around you, right? You don't have these people that are creating energetic drag and trying to keep your vibration in a lower timeline. And going back to what I mentioned, it's crucial that you address those energies before you put all of this time and focus into actually beginning the manifestation process. It's as if you have to prepare your environment and your life to receive the manifestation. You need to send out an energetic signature to the universe that you are the best place, you are the best keeper for said manifestation, whatever that may be. All manifestation, no matter what it is, big or small, is influenced by energy. Everything holds energy, even material things, because 
we tell it that it holds energy. So anywhere where we put our mind and our focus automatically holds energy. The entire universe, everything in it is made up of energy. So when you send out that energetic signature to the universe, this is what I want, the universe will either deem you the best candidate for that manifestation or it won't. And, you know, a lot of people, when this happens, they take it personal. But if you can just start to think about things in terms of energy and vibration, you'll start to realize that the universe doesn't really care about all the finer details in your life. The universe just looks at things in terms of energy. Are you vibrating at this frequency or not? That's it. And what determines if you are vibrating at a particular frequency goes back to your environments, right? So everything here is connected. This is why we address our environments, our behavioral patterns, and our mindsets so we don't waste our time putting all of this energy into trying to manifest something when we're not going to vibrationally align with it. And this can go both ways. You know, we see this a lot in relationships where people who've been putting a lot of work into their spiritual evolution and growth are vibrating much higher, but maybe they're still energetically attached to a toxic individual from their past. What they'll find is they'll never align with that person because that person's not where they are on a higher vibrational timeline. So the only way for that person to come into alignment with that toxic individual is to lower their vibration, to lower their standard of life, to align with them in that energy of lack. Unless, of course, the person who is vibrating lower puts in all the work to meet the other individual. But this is very rare because you have to consider all the work that you've put in to get to where you are. Now, could you actually see that other person doing that? Chances are your answer is probably no, you can't. And so this is why one of the most difficult parts of this journey is having to release those family members that just don't get it, that don't want to see the truth, that don't want to look at themselves in the mirror and would rather continue to feed themselves a lie an illusion and actually wake up to the truths that maybe their entire life, for the most part, they have been living a lie. And what I've really come to learn is that all of us are graduating on from living a lie. We're not born spiritually awakened. We're born not even knowing where we came from. And as life goes on, we're just mainlined the lie that all of us have been trying to escape. And it's just one of these things that people find their way when they're meant to. There's nothing that any of us can do to force that upon anyone. The absolute best thing you can do is keep pushing forward and just be an influence. Live your life, be happy, and hopefully people will just pick up on it. Hey, they were able to do it, maybe I can do it too. That really needs to be the mindset here because the alternative to that is jeopardizing all of your growth up until this point for somebody else's lack of growth and understanding. And that is self-sabotage at its absolute most extreme. What do we have at the heart, please? Nine of Swords, Gemini energy at the heart. A lot of you are really being encouraged to release any sort of regrets and guilt from past decisions you may have made. You need to trust that each one of those choices has served for your growth. When you're still consumed by all of this energy, it's really hard to see that, right? You can't see the forest for the trees. But once you step outside of that energy and you look back with perspective from a higher vantage point, it's so very clear. This is when you've reached a certain level of mastery within self. And this Nine of Swords coming out right there at that heart position is really speaking about you releasing codependency, uh, toxic dynamics, or any sort of lingering attachments that are weighing on your emotional well-being at this time, your mental well-being, all of these things have got to go. Because what you start to begin to understand is that as you're releasing these things, it's as if these connections become more exacerbated. People can feel you releasing them, and it's as if they start to act out. It's all a part of the process. It's like they can feel you cutting the energetic cords. This is also the universe's way of signaling you, trying to show you the truths that have been hidden in plain sight this entire time. A lot of people call this the veil being ripped back or the veil being parted. You're able to see things in a way that you didn't see them before. Maybe that toxic family member is really showing you their true colors for the first time ever, but they're not really doing anything different. The only thing that's different 
is you. You know, a lot of people are also breaking out of these karmic cycles right now. And it's during this time that they start to reappear because the universe wants you to bring closure to these areas of your life. The universe wants you to break free from these patterns that have been passed down through the generations. You were chosen to actually bring healing and a new perspective of thinking and moving to your family lineage or to your communities, however it resonates for you. You know, when it comes to releasing people, even outdated belief systems, behavioral patterns, whatever it may be, it's not so much the person or the thing you're releasing. You're just releasing the old version of yourself that actually engaged with those things. It's like leaving a past version of yourself behind and evolving and moving on. It's almost like a splitting of the person you once were to this person you are becoming. And this allows you to step into an entirely new timeline. It's as if you just wake up from one day to the next and your conscious awareness is on a new timeline and you're inside this new improved version of yourself. This is very much what timeline jumping is. And timeline jumping is very real. It's sort of like when you wake up from a dream only to still be dreaming and then wake up from that dream. But then all of a sudden you wake up again and you're like, what's happening here? That's what timeline jumping feels like. In fact, some of you might even be having dreams similar to that. It could even be a kind of foreshadowing of what is to come, which could really speak about this nine of swords because there you are in bed, right? Asleep. It's like everything is being reorganized, resorted as above, right? In spirit. What do we have at the throat, please? Oh, perfect. Wheel of Fortune, Sag energy at the throat. So we led right into this card perfectly because the Wheel of Fortune is all about timelines, life cycles. There's a major turning point in your lives right now that you're being given an opportunity to actually step into, but these are the necessary actions to actually catch the boat this time around, so to speak. It's during these times that we start to have these feelings of self-doubt flooding through. We start to second-guess ourselves. Second-guessing ourselves is becoming all-consuming, and it feels like there's some sort of force that is working overtime to disrupt us on our path. But this is all because of some sort of negative external forces that a lot of you may be dealing with at current. Now, again, whether it's people in your environment, it's some sort of projective energy, it's going to be different for all of you out there. But no matter what it is, it's very important that you just keep pushing forward no matter how hard it gets. Because going back or falling back into old ways, I promise you, is going to be so much harder than actually staying the course. You have to remember that spiritual evolution is just that, evolution, constant expansion. It never stops. It never rests. And the sooner you can get into this kind of mindset that the resistance you may feel is just a normal component to spiritual evolution, the better off you'll be. Because you'll quickly remind yourself that the self-doubt you may be feeling or the projective energy that you can't seem to pinpoint the origin of is all a sign that the level up is coming. And the Wheel of Fortune also represents this portal, right? So the divine is lining you up to jump through the portal when it comes around. It's sort of like, well, I'm seeing this in my mind's eye right now. Uh, you're on a, a carousel, right? And it's going around and around. And you have to jump off just at the perfect time to dive through the portal, right? This is sort of what it's like. I mean, that kind of looks like a carousel, right? And as we can see, we also have the moon right there. So we have it essentially being represented twice, right? There and there. You know, quite often people begin to worry that they're going to miss the opportunity to jump through the portal. But I think that anybody who's actually worried about this is worried not because they're going to miss the portal, but because they know that there's still things from their life that they need to sacrifice and release. And they're essentially just making up excuses 
as to why they can't release those things. We all know what we need to do, every single last one of us. But again, the hardest thing that we have to face is ourselves, right? Being honest with ourselves is much harder than being honest with other people. Because the way you interface with your reality creates an influence of how you interface with all of the people, situations, and circumstances that come onto your path. So you set the tone. It's like somebody who is living a lie or somebody who's living in their truth. Truth is the first step to this process. Accepting the truth about yourself and the life you've been living. And then second, accepting the truths that the universe, the divine, and God are showing you about your environments and how they are just direct reflections on how you have been living your life up until that point. If you can get over those two things, then you've pretty much got this in the bag because those things will be some of the hardest things you have ever done in your life, if not the hardest. What do we have in the third eye? Nine of Wands, Sag energy at the third eye. Perfect. So whenever I get this nine of wands, it's like there's a representative from divine headquarters has shown up and they're getting ready to help you jump into this new portal, right? It's like they've just come and rescued you from this battle. See how uh, this individual, this person from divine headquarters, this representative has blood on their shirt and here you are, you're all beat up. You're looking kind of paranoid right? And you guys are waiting for the divine mothership to come through to help carry you into the next timeline. And there's an emphasis here again on setting some sort of boundaries with these opposing energies. You know, what I mentioned about us knowing, right? That's that inner voice. That's that inner wisdom that guides us, that speaks to us. That's our higher self. And it's very real. It's like when you do something and maybe you feel guilty or you feel bad. And that feeling is a kind of misalignment. It's like you're coming out of calibration with that higher version of yourself. But I feel that right now, especially with this full moon, that inner voice is louder than ever. You know, it appears just as a knowing. It's a kind of silent voice. It speaks to you without sound. It just creates a feeling within you. That's your intuition. That's how this all works. We all have it. But because our world is constructed the way it is, it becomes very hard for you to hear it or find it because you become so consumed with the everyday grind of life. Maybe there's certain things that you need to do that require you to sacrifice a lot of dynamics at current. So big decisions have to be made. Sometimes it's shocking to me how many people get that same sort of call, right? But they don't take it. They just hold on to everything that's not serving their highest good because they're not willing to put the work in. They're lacking faith. You know, the universe is always going to rearrange things for you behind the scenes, right? I like to think that we're sent down here on a mission. And as we step into these life cycles, obviously things don't go exactly as planned inside that very detailed mission for us. So the divine is constantly scrambling, right, to rearrange things in your mission statement. But the end target, I feel, is always the same. It's just everything in between changes around. Everything in between is kind of like the detours of life. The divine knows that you're not going to go down the exact path that they want you to go down. They know that you're going to get pulled into the darkness and you're going to travel off into the abyss for several years, maybe decades, be way off your path. That once strong inner voice just turns into a distant echo. But something that helps when it comes to understanding how this works is being honest with yourself about how far off of your path you may have gone so you can get a good idea of the amount of work you have to put in to get back on path, right? It's like when you're on path, the divine has this clear channel to you, is able to get messages through to you with ease. But then when you start to wander off path, the divine's like, hey, come back over here. We can, we can barely get this download to you. Your reception's really bad. And you're like, what? Who's talking to me? They're like, it's us, it's divine. The divine's like, you're going to have to hike through the Sahara on a camel for four and a half years, but don't worry, just keep going straight, you'll make it. So in saying all that and to kind of give a bit of a summary there, no matter where you are, no matter how far into the darkness you have gone, there's always a way out. It just all comes down to your willingness to put in the work necessary to make it happen. What do we have with the crown, please? Perfect. 
Five of Cups, Scorpio energy at the crown. This entire energy is about detachment, right? This Five of Cups here is showing us that there's this individual. That can be you, right? It's like you're having to turn a blind eye to this energy that's pretending like they're drowning, but it's really only a foot of water, right? And these three cups can represent how this energy is unrequited, whatever that represents for you. And it's time to turn around and put your energy into these two cups because there seems to be an emphasis on quality over quantity, okay? And see how there's these kind of dark clouds? It almost gives that you engaging with these energies here brings this into your life. And the dark clouds for me always represent that lack mindset, that poverty mindset. Now, it could be literal in that you are dealing with people inside your environments like we already picked up, or in a lot of cases as well, it can be learnt behavioral patterns that you picked up earlier on in life that were the direct result of an influence that you had around you that you have been carrying up until present day. Now, this is directly connected to generational karma. That's what it is. You know, in a nutshell, these things that are passed through the family lineage are just kinds of behavioral patterns. They're ways of living life that just don't work for us at present day. They speak about old, outdated belief systems that need to be broken in order to evolve the energetic signature of your particular family lineage. Now, that's quite a profound statement, but what it comes down to is that each one of your families holds a kind of energy to that particular family structure. And as time goes on, that energetic signature becomes stuck. It needs to evolve. So you get sent into the third density, which is the here and now, and are incarnated into these families to become the black sheep, the chosen one, the outcast, to break those patterns so they don't continue any longer through the family lineage. Now, in a lot of cases, it results in a complete destruction of family units in your life. You know, a lot of the times when you begin to research your family and you maybe go back a couple hundred years, there'll be some things in there that kind of seem off. You know, maybe your last name was changed up or uh, something weird kind of happened that kind of threw the trajectory of that family lineage onto another path, so to speak. And I think that those are quite possibly black sheep and chosen ones that came before you, right? It's like they have to come through, let's say, you know, it just numbers off the top of my head, maybe every hundred years, one has to come through and redirect the energetic signature of that particular family unit, okay? So here we are in the here and now, and this actual timeline that we're on in this modern day we're seeing a lot of this take place. There's a lot of chosen people, a lot of black sheep are on the planet right now. And, you know, we can also see this in the world. There's great upheaval everywhere. There's massive change taking place. It's not just in the family structures, it's globally, politically, everywhere. Everything is changing. But it all can be reduced back to the trajectory of energetic signatures and the life path of the people inside these family units. And then I have the Five of Cups on the bottom of the deck. Now, this Five of Cups is a little different than this one here because it speaks about an energy that is feeling left out and abandoned by you for actually harnessing the courage and the strength to move on from this previous karmic cycle. You know, I'm picking up a very cowardice energy, right? People that had no problem coming for you, forming weapons against you. But then as soon as you step into your full power, it's like all of a sudden they're like, oh, how could you? How could you be so mean? Right? There's almost like this gaslighting energy. Like they can't understand that you reacted to their wickedness the way you did. Delusional, spiritually depraved kinds of energies is what a lot of you have been dealing with. And that's what it really is when you deal with narcissists as well. As soon as you stand up for yourself, they try to flip the script on you. All of a sudden it's, oh, how could you? Who do you think you are? Right? It's like you say no more and the mere act of you harnessing the confidence to actually put your foot down 
can be seen as some sort of act of defiance towards them, as if to say that you're just supposed to shut up and deal with their treatment towards you. And I feel for a lot of you, this is family structures. It's like you come along and you start telling people exactly who they are, and these individuals can't deal with it. And a lot of you are also coming from family structures, family units, so to speak, that blamed you for everything because you're the one who unearthed a lot of the darkness. You're the one who refused to sweep it up under the rug and instead you dragged it all out into the light. You know, that moon at the foundation of the reading, I just heard, I looked over at it and I heard pulling the skeletons out of the closet, right? What do we have at the foundation, please? Ten of Swords, Gemini energy at the foundation. Unbelievable. Follows what I just said perfectly because this is an ending and a beginning. It stops with you. You're not allowing it to persist any further. And if it means that you have to cut off every single person that was in this previous timeline, so be it. Because it's a whole lot better than selling yourself out and sacrificing to this kind of depraved way of living. They don't like that you have come along and broken free of the spiritual bondage that they thought you would remain in for your entire life. The individuals whose opinions you were once afraid of hearing have now all been marked as utter cowards. They've all run for the hills, and this is how it goes as a chosen individual. Fear only exists if you say it does. Most of you will go a good portion of your life without even realizing that because it takes you stepping into your path to become completely cloaked by the armor of God, right? You have to accept the mission. They try to entomb you in fear so you never wake up to the truth and foil their plans. What do we have at the sacral, please? Six of Swords. Aquarius energy at the sacral. Right underneath that Eight of Wands. So both of these cards here represent delays, stagnation, feeling blocked. It's like you can't move forward. You're carrying the baggage of your family lineage, right? You know, a good portion of people that are born under these kinds of dynamics are guided to obviously break free of this spiritual bondage and step onto your path, which then sees you building kinds of structures and businesses for yourself that are all based on what you've overcome. It's like the divine saying to you, hey, we got a whole package deal for you here. We're going to incarnate you into this toxic, devilish family. You're going to become the black sheep or the chosen one and expose the spiritual bondage, break free of those chains that bind you. And then we're going to position you on a new timeline, armed with the wisdom of overcoming the enemies of that particular karmic cycle, which you are now going to push forward with and impart on other individuals who may need the same assistance. There's countless different ways this can show up. I'm speaking very generally. So place it as it sees fit for you. But most of you should have a little bit of an idea of what that might look like, what you might be feeling pulled towards. You must heal yourself to become the healer. And then right on the bottom of the deck, I have the tower, Mars, Aries, Scorpio energy. But this tower from this deck is an energy that is trying to stop this from happening. It's different than the regular tower. The regular tower is an energy of destruction. This is an energy that is trying to stop this destructive force from coming through and foiling their plans, so to speak. What do we have the solar plexus, please? Four of Pentacles, Val Four at the solar plexus. I'm getting something here surrounding a sense of security over happiness and purpose. Now, this can show up in obviously many different ways. But generally speaking, it's an energy that stays put inside this kind of misery because they have to rebuild or because maybe they'll lose something monetarily. Maybe they'll lose a sense of security. And this is a tactic that narcissists will use to actually try and keep you trapped. They'll provide some sort of sense of security, however this shows up for you. So if you ever decide to break free of them, you will be in a kind of deficit. So it's very important to try and identify that as soon as possible and try to break free of that at all costs. In some cases, it can be more extreme. It just really depends on your own set of circumstances and what you're dealing with here. But 
these situations are never easy. It's very difficult. And this is definitely a kind of fool's journey. You're asked to step out on faith in the knowing that the divine and God is guiding you. It may be rough at first. Things aren't going to be easy. But with a little bit of patience, you will find yourself standing on a more stabilized foundation that you yourself have constructed with the divine. And nobody else in any way, shape, or form has any say-so in it. And this is really what this page of pentacles and four of pentacles is speaking about it's like here you are building a new foundation with the universe you're manifesting the first step and this four of pentacles is an energy that is trying to hold you back like yeah you can't leave here you know what are you gonna do about this that and the other you know you're never gonna be able to stabilize yourself or do this or blah 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 whatever that represents for you What do we have at the heart, please? The lovers, Gemini energy at the heart. Okay, so treason and revolt. Now, this lover's card, I read in its negative polarity. So there's an energy here of discord and arguments, separations, okay, whether it's family structures, relationships you're in, friends, jobs. But this energy here is something that is creating a lot of disharmony in your life, overall misaligned values as well. Don't sacrifice your mental and spiritual well-being for a sense of security in your life that you can get back with assistance from the divine. Anything material can always be replaced. And almost 100% of the time, the things that hold a lot of us back are all material-based. Money, possessions, security, homes, cars, all of these things. It's a form of spiritual bondage. Once you release yourself from the spiritual bondage regarding these things that are material in nature, and you focus on your mental well-being and your spiritual health, everything that is material comes to you without even thinking about it. See, humans by nature manifest from a very low vibrational space, manifest from the material side of things. But once you start manifesting from a space of universe, I would like to manifest this thing into my life, but I want to manifest it from the space of what is in the highest good of myself and the highest good of all. Then everything starts to come with ease because there's no reason that the universe doesn't want to supply you with said manifestation if it's going to allow you to function inside of your mission and purpose in a more efficient way. Once you get this down, sky's the limit. Because there's just about anything that you can fit into that space. You just have to make it make sense to your path, and again, the highest good of all. And then we have the strength card, Leo energy, loyalty. Okay, so now I'm starting to see an energy here where you are breaking away of self-doubt and you're no longer suppressing the urge to push forward on this new path, which, again, is requiring you to do all of this cord cutting and releasing at current. You're no longer allowing yourself to be subjected to anybody's narcissistic ways that are abusing their power in your life to keep you trapped. See, these energies may have victimized you, but you're doing one more worse when you understand that and you stay there. Refuse to be a victim. Victimization should be something that disgusts you, right? Because these kinds of people know that if they can make a victim out of you, they've got you. But if they try to make a victim out of you and you flip it around on them and you say, uh-uh-uh, you're not going to make a victim out of me, right? I see you for who you are. I'm out of here. As soon as you do that, it's over for them because this is mass exposure. And I call this disarming the narcissist. Yes, they may form weapons against you, but rather than approaching it from the space of, look what you did to me. How could you do that to me? You approach it with, oh yeah, I saw what you did and you will not be doing it again because you will never get an opportunity to ever be in my presence from now and until the rest of eternity. And you know, when it comes to these sorts of individuals, right? Like I said, they, they want to make a victim out of you. So then they can sit there and say, oh yeah, they're acting like a victim. It's just diabolical, extreme forms of gaslighting and psychological abuse. What do we have at the throat? Perfect. 
Perfect. Death card. Scorpio energy at the throat. God, the end of the universe. Endings and rebirth influences health and longevity. Okay, so now we're seeing a complete transformation of the person that you are becoming. The death card is the phoenix rising from the ashes. Okay, endings and rebirth. So an end to this old cycle and a beginning of something new. So we have the Ten of Swords and the Death card here, which are very similar energies in that they both represent the ending and the beginning here. So you're no longer sitting inside this energy feeling stuck and like you can't move forward. You're no longer resisting change and you're refusing to allow these energies to destroy your hope. You're getting up and fighting for your happiness, for your purpose, for your mission, and for the greater good of all. Because when you are fighting for yourself, that is you signing up to fight for the greater good of all because you are an incremental piece of evolution. See, the first thing that all of us need to take control over in our lives is that which we can actually control. Everything that is outside of our control, let it go for now. Okay, you're just wasting your time. You're wasting your energy. All of that stuff is not your responsibility anyway. That's the stuff that the universe, that the divine, that God takes care of for you, right? Lay your burdens at my feet. Go get focused on your path. We'll take care of this for you and we'll speak about it later. This is the mindset that you must take on if you want to see this level of growth in your life. What do we have in the third eye, please? Too many cards. What do we have in the third eye? Too many cards. What do we have in the third eye? Two of Cups, Cancer Energy at the Third Eye. The swiftly hearkening God, Fruition, provides expansive intelligence and gives the grace of God. Okay, so follows perfectly what I just said. Because now we're starting to see massive change unfolding in your life. Once you really started to wrap your minds around this sort of mindset. I call this the evolutionary mindset, right? Thinking about your life as an energetic signature that is constantly expanding in tandem with the universe and also understanding that there's an opposing force that is working in the opposite direction so getting inside the evolutionary mindset and understanding that there's also a de-evolving de-evolutionary mindset at play at all times and it comes in the form of this energy that you're dealing with. The people, the places, the things, the behavioral patterns, the mindsets, the families, the generational karma, whatever it may be. Typically speaking, it's going to show up in all of those areas for all of us, okay? Everybody's situations, everybody's circumstances are different, but we're going to deal with these sorts of opposing energies coming at us from all different directions. What do we have with the crown to close this out, please? Knight of Wands, Aries, Leo, Sag energy at the crown to close out the reading. God, the good in himself, protection, prevents discovery of secret crimes, saves exiles. So whenever I read this phrase here, prevents discovery of secret crimes, this is just really speaking about a timeline that you were going to step onto where you have implemented this new mindset, which allows you to recognize these energies, to not make up excuses for these energies. It allows you to rip off those rose-colored glasses and look at your reality through a clear lens with zero filters. The Knight of Wands is also an energy of complete confidence. It's an energy of action, courage. And this is what you are now harnessing as you step into this new timeline. And you have this shield around you, protecting you from these opposing energies. You've heeded the call and you are now cloaked and able to move forward in purpose and power in the knowing that the enemy, however it may show up for you in your own individual life, will never be able to take you down as long as you are always standing in your truth and your personal power.
This is the message I have available to all of you, depending on where you are on this timeline, should you choose to accept. I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you would like a personal reading, you can find all of my contact details in the description below this video. And thank you for your donations. Take care.